This channel has almost exclusively focused on disappearances that take place inside the U.S. However, this does not mean that strange disappearances do not occur everywhere else in the world. The fact is, they do. These cases are equally as important as any others. Different places and cultures can also offer different perspectives and theories on the causes of disappearances. These deep-rooted beliefs, legends, and mythologies provide a thought-provoking backdrop in this video. If nothing else, this will go to show that strange disappearances do not stop at any border. Before we delve any further, I want to take a moment to thank Atlas VPN for sponsoring this video. When I'm not doing artwork or researching missing persons cases, I like to kick back and watch the occasional movie on Netflix. However, there's nothing more annoying than knowing what movie you want to watch, only to find... Atlas VPN provides a solution to this unfortunate situation, right now, and for only $1.39 a month, with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Atlas VPN works by encrypting your data and hiding your virtual location. Using this newfound power, you can change your geolocation and thus grant yourself access to countless hours of more content, all for a fraction of the price of Netflix itself. This same method works for a number of other popular streaming services, including Amazon Prime and Disney+. Atlas VPN also provides users with their data breach monitor, a tool that can take your email address and scan the internet to see if it has been found in any data breaches or dumps. This feature will then notify you if any of your information has become compromised by such incidents, allowing you to change your password before anyone can steal it. Atlas VPN is available on any device and provides numerous other benefits, including secure file sharing and even gets you the best deals on airline tickets and hotels. All of this for what basically amounts to pocket change. Follow the link in the description below and get three years of Atlas VPN for $1.39 a month with a 30-day money-back guarantee. This offer won't last forever, so grab it while you can. In August of 2019, 15-year-old Nora Quarren and her family traveled from their home in England to Malaysia for vacation. The group consisted of Nora, her two younger siblings, and their parents. Nora suffered from a developmental disability which required almost constant supervision, according to her parents. She had poor coordination and could not walk very far unaccompanied. The family flew into the Kuala Lumpur International Airport on August 3rd and then set out to begin their vacation at the Dusan, an eco-resort near Seremban, about 40 miles south of Kuala Lumpur. The resort consists of a piece of property with a number of independent bungalows for guests and because it is located next to a large nature preserve, it is surrounded by dense jungle. Upon arriving at the Dusun Resort, the family settled into the two-story Taper House, one of the Dusun's most luxury chalets. Nora spent some time walking the grounds and watching local wildlife with her mother, before being put to bed in one of the upstairs rooms, along with her sister. The next morning, Nora was no longer in the bed, and nowhere to be found. A window on the first floor was open, and it was later discovered that the lock was not working, which allowed it to be opened from the outside. This fact made Nora's parents immediately concerned that someone had snuck in and kidnapped her during the night. The parents immediately contacted Malaysian authorities, who began to search the jungle surrounding the resort. They explained the extent of their daughter's condition as this. Nora can read like a young child but she cannot write more than a few words. She has a good memory, but she cannot understand anything conceptual. She is unable to do maths, and so things like money are impossible to manage. Many participated in the search, including local hikers, elite military units, dog teams, and helicopters. Authorities also used recordings of Nora's mother's voice, blasted into the jungle through loudspeakers to try and coax her out. 
Days dragged on with no new leads while authorities got more creative in their searches, using divers to search the beds of rivers in the area. As the search grew increasingly dire, the police used the assistance of local shamans or medicine men. These are people that claim to have access to or influence over the spirit world. The shamans performed ancient rituals in the jungle in an attempt to find Nora. One of these men went on to claim that he thought Nora was taken by a djinn, or an invisible forest spirit that targeted Nora because of her disability. He would also go on to say that in order to get Nora back, they would need to give something in exchange. He did not elaborate any further on this, except to say that it would be between him and the spirit. Nora's body would be discovered on a rock by a stream in the middle of a jungle on August 13th. This area was located about two miles from the Doosan Resort, and in an area difficult to access, but that had also been searched many times before. In total, she had been missing for about ten days. Authorities had treated Nora's case as a missing persons case rather than an abduction from the very beginning despite her parents' insistence that they felt Nora was kidnapped. The theory at the time was that Nora had snuck out of the resort house and walked into the jungle where she must have wandered barefoot and almost naked for at least a few miles, and that she had not been discovered sooner because she must have always been on the move. This theory did not sit well with her parents. Her father had this to say, Nora's mobility... Nora's balance was not great. Nora wasn't capable of, she didn't have any survival instinct. Given the fact that she was not clothed, she was only wearing underwear, she didn't have any shoes, I could not understand or imagine, first of all, how she would get out of the resort and venture into the jungle. A coroner would go on to state that her cause of death was intestinal bleeding, brought on by starvation and stress. It is estimated that she had been dead a few days before she was found. Additional evidence that supported the parents' point of view was the fact that Nora's feet were dirty, but otherwise undamaged despite her supposedly walking barefoot through miles of rough jungle. Her parents would claim that she would be unable to navigate this terrain on her own, insinuating that she must have been carried by someone. They went on to speculate that she was perhaps kidnapped and then simply left in the jungle after the abductors realized she had disabilities. In 2020, an official inquest was held in Malaysia after much pressure from her parents, but the end result remained the same. Her death was ruled a death by misadventure. During the inquest, Nora's parents listed their reasons for pushing the abduction theory. Some of these were that professional canines were unable to follow Nora's scent, that the open window to the chalet had unidentified fingerprints found on the outside, that Nora had neither the cognitive nor physical means to leave the chalet by the window on her own, and that hundreds of people relentlessly searched the surrounding area, including where Nora was found on the day of or immediately preceding the day of her death. Also, there was a lack of major physical damage to Nora's body, despite her inability to handle the jungle terrain. Her mother also stated that her body did not reflect someone who is constantly moving or exposed to the harshest elements. Some additional details did emerge during the inquest, such as both parents stating that they heard muffled noises or possibly whispering the night that Nora disappeared but they were half asleep at the time and did not investigate. Other evidence supporting the case for abduction was lacking, with many questions regarding how a kidnapping could have been pulled off without anyone else in the house noticing. Pictures from the taper house show a very narrow spiral staircase leading upstairs. An intruder would have to sneak in through the window, walk up the spiral staircase, and somehow coax an unwilling child out of the house. Nora's sister, who was sharing the bed with her that night, stated that she got up once during the night to use the bathroom and had noticed her sister was missing, 
but assumed that Nora had left to go sleep with her parents, something she often did. It would then appear that whatever happened, it occurred fairly early in the evening. At the same time, Nora's family holds firm that there is no way Nora would be capable of escaping by herself during the night due to her disabilities. Fingerprints found on the window to the chalet could not be positively matched to anyone, but could have been there from previous guests or employees. This lack of closure has led to many alternative theories about what could have happened to Nora Quarren. Perhaps one of the more prominent was brought on by the introduction of the shamans to the case, who spoke of Nora being taken by the Orang Bunyan, folkloric supernatural beings that are invisible to most humans. The idea being that a spirit came into the chalet and was able to take Nora into the jungle. While these beings were not seriously considered as a cause during the inquest that was held, it's interesting to see how deep certain beliefs go in Malaysian culture. Many people do believe in these things. In 2016, a school in Malaysia closed down after 11 teachers and 50 students reported sightings or attacks of a black figure or spirit in the rooms and hallways. You can find a grainy image taken of the supposed figure by searching online. A teacher at the school also spoke of how the spirit made an attempt to possess them. This incident was taken seriously by locals while world media called it a case of mass hysteria. Authorities then brought in Islamic experts and witch doctors in an attempt to cleanse the school of the malevolent spirit. A similar event happened to a school in 2019, also reporting apparitions of a dark figure. These events are examples of the depth of spiritual beliefs in Malaysian culture. So it may not come as a surprise that when faced with a situation that lacks any concrete explanation, like the case of Nora, that authorities look to shamans in order to find answers. But when a terrible incident such as this is left unresolved, it leaves the door open to a lot of speculation. No one theory totally explains all the questions surrounding this case. If Nora left of her own accord, how did she get where she was found despite her disabilities and with her feet unscathed? If kidnappers were involved, how did they get her out of the house without anyone noticing? What were their intentions? And where was she during the ten days she was missing? The more unconventional theories while not necessarily supported by much hard evidence, are attempting to explain what has up until this point been unexplainable. Many of those who follow the missing 411 cases will notice that the list of items that Nora's parents spoke about during her inquest are shared with lots of other strange missing persons cases. While this doesn't provide an explanation for what happened to Nora, it does put her case in a category that of a long list of other missing individuals whose disappearances we have no concrete explanation for. Until next time, thanks for watching.